well, he's the guy, right? <laughs> so the exciting news is a, a, a CCC book on Vermont's coming out. It'll be his 12th book. And he's written three on CCC camps, um, the Adirondacks, Connecticut, where he's from, and, um, and Rhode Island. And I'm going to turn it right over to you, Marty, because they want to hear you, not me, introduce you. You'll be talking about yourself anyway, other than um, retired teacher. So who better be a historian than a teacher, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so we're really excited about this program, looking on all these different places in Vermont, of course, Waterbury <coughs> being the biggest, really. And, uh, and thank you to Anne for her tireless work. and. Yeah. I know others have worked as well, but I just know Anne and, and all that she's done, so I'm thrilled. So without further ado, Marty, take it away. Okay. <laughs> Everybody yeah. signed it back then, wants to sign it? Well, thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. I mean, I could not ever dream of writing a book on Vermont. I fell in love with your state when my son uh, went to a college night and he saw this big board of a skier. Oh. And it was for College of St. Joe's in Rutland. Mm -hmm. And he said, that's where I want to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> so I made the trip back and forth. And then his last two years, he asked his grandparents, uh, and also us, uh, instead of paying the room, uh, you know, the dormitory, if he could buy a house and rent out rooms and uh, make some money to pay for it. So he did this, and uh, I think he paid 40000 for it, and then he sold it for eighty four in two years because it basically needed cosmetics, uh, things. And, of course, he did a lot of skiing. And then he wound up in Colorado for 15 years, but now he's in Connecticut with my three grandbabies, four-year-old twin girls and little Luke. So we're happy he came back with his brother, who just got engaged yesterday at 47. <laughs> I thought, there's no way. No way he's going to give up the dating game. But uh, yeah. So I'm originally from around Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. I don't think we have any. Where? I was in State College for a couple of years. State College. Anybody in Pennsylvania? Somebody's from Sunbury. Okay, right there. My dad grew up in New York and went to college in Racetown. Where? Racetown. Juniata, middle of nowhere. Oh, Juniata. Yeah. Oh, not my car. <laughs> and uh, I went to King's College, which is run by Holy Cross Fathers. They have Sacred Heart College, Stonehill, Notre Dame, and also Portland. So I studied history, love history. I mean, then I went to New Jersey, taught fourth grade instead of, I couldn't get a job teaching. So I got a job teaching fourth grade. Then I taught seventh and eighth grade history. Seven, and uh, I loved US history. Then I got a master's in reading and uh, did mostly remedial reading. Try to get my kids interested in reading. Uh, especially those kids, they just love motorcycles, etc. So I took them to Raceway Park, which was in our town, which all drag strip, and they even let me bring a busload of kids, uh, my remedial reading students. Then I found out that the next town had Wally Dollenbeck, who was an Indianapolis car driver. Called him up, I said, would you talk to my students about racing? He said, sure. So he came sat down with my remedial reading students, and then a, a couple weeks later, car number seven, Wally Dollenbeck, was on TV, you know? Mm -hmm. car, so all you have to do is ask, and you get them. Mm -hmm. So uh, then he showed a movie uh, of you know him and uh, STP, Andy Granatelli, I don't know if you remember. Yeah, yeah you, mm -hmm. you nodded the head. Mm -hmm. So I, and then I went to the Catskill Mountains, a little town called Delhi, that's I was. Other set of grandparents. Sorry. <laughs> what? That's where my other set of grandparents is from. <laughs> What's their name? Uh, the Bergens. They run the, the dairy farm. Yes, down in. On uh, Route Ten. Yeah, in the hamlet of Fraser. <laughs> 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 which, which is my great great grandma, her great great aunt, 
get Jesse Bell's dowry. Unbelievable, no, the Bergens. <laughs> okay. Yep. I was at another talk, Sorry. I can't remember, last week, and I mentioned Delhi, and this girl said, oh, my relatives were in uh, Treadwell, and I said, uh, one was a doctor, and I said, was it Dr. Heineck? He said, yes, that was our family doctor. <laughs> so it's just... Small world. The one of the two families from Treadwell. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. So then I taught school there, seventh grade reading, and I wanted to get the kids interested in reading. So one boy came up to me and said, Mr. Podscotch, this book, My Side of the Mountain by Gene George, is all about Delhi. I said, you're crazy. You know, this little farm town, it had a junior college, Delhi Tech, and I looked in the book, yes it did. Came from New York City, looking for his grandpa Gribbley's farm, how he lived out in the woods uh, in a hollowed out tree, tamed a hawk, you know, it's all fictional, and uh, spent the fall, winter, and spring. So I looked in the back of the book. She's from Chappaqua, New York. Mm -hmm. well, where the hell is that, you know? So I got information for 555-1212, you know, <laughs> and I got Jean George's phone number. So one night, I dialed the number, and a lady answered. I said, is Jean George there? She said, speaking. <laughs> I'm just a teacher from Delhi. Oh, Delhi, what a wonderful town. This is the one, you know, she just picked some Catskill town. So I said, we're poor, we can't afford an author. How would you like to be, come to our first book fair? Oh, I'd love to. So she won the Newberry Award. If you look in there, the gold things, twice for my Side of the Mountain, and Julia of the Wolves. And she wrote a hundred nature books. Wow. So here I had her, I told other writers, Jean George is coming. I had 12 writers beside her one day, K through 12. I did this for 25 years. Wow. They all came for free. One time, I had Eric Carl stay at my house. <laughs> Made him French toast with, uh, you know, uh, maple syrup, and my daughter sat on his lap and read *The Hungry Caterpillar*. Aww. I had Ann Martin, the babysitter books, come. You know, I'd have like my daughter just loved those books. So my whole idea was to get kids interested in reading because I went to parochial schools with the nuns. We had no library. There wasn't a library in town. You read one story every other day, you looked up the vocabulary, answered the questions. How the hell would you ever want to love to read? You know? <laughs> so this was my way of getting, and guess what? I became an author. <laughs> of all things, I, let's see, turn it on. I went to a fire tower, okay? It was on Hunter Mountain. I don't know if you've ever been to Hunter Mountain in the Catskills. Anne's been there skiing. They have different festivals. We climbed up in October. It was a little rainy, drizzly, and it turned to snow. We got up at the top, and a little guy came out of the cabin. He said, hey, guys, you want to come in and get warmed up by the fire? So we sat by his wood fire stove, and he gave us a glass of water. He said, this is the greatest job in the world where you meet thousands of people from all over the world, and you get paid for it. <laughs> so I was just talking to Mariah back there, and she said how she goes to the fire towers. Anybody else been to a fire tower? Yeah. Okay. I was telling them, too, guess what my phobia is? Hi, hi, hi. And I've written three books on fire towers. <laughs> but the only way I got up a couple of them is by closing my eyes, holding on to somebody, and then opening my eyes, and the wind is blowing, and oh, it's a gorgeous sight. Let's get down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because one of them in the Adirondacks gets 80 foot, but some of them down in Florida, 125 foot high. Wow. And I don't know if it was 150. I mean, it's just unbelievable. So that was my first claim to fame. <coughs> I went, there's, oh, the pointer doesn't work. Here's a little Delhi. It's yeah. right near the Delaware River. 
okay? You're only on it, and up here is Cooperstown, okay? Oh. One of the authors that I had come was Kenny Smith. He was the head of the Baseball Hall of Fame. He was retired, so every year he would give me four tickets to the induction ceremony and the, the game. So I got to meet Ted Williams, Robin Roberts, you know, all these famous baseball players are right there. My son got uh, Ted Turner's wife, the actress. Jane Fonda. Jane Fonda. I'd be sitting next to um, Mel Allen, you know, the Yankees. It was just, I was, I was just loaded. All you have to do is ask. So then I decided to go up to the Adirondacks, six million acres of Vermont land. <laughs> right? Where you've got, they made a law in the 1880s, forever wild, you can't cut down trees on state land, okay? And they had 57 fire towers there. So what I had to do is, I wound up doing the southern towers and the northern towers, okay? And besides the Catskill one, and then I also had a guy come, a comic book illustrator. So he said, Marty, let's do something together. So I said, let's do the Adirondacks. This would be great to do, you know, if he was still alive, but just on Vermont. And we did, look at this, the te every week he would do something like this. I mean, he was just fabulous, 50-some years doing comic books. He knew all the top, top guys. So we did that, and so we wound up getting two volumes. We did it for five years, 52-ish, you know, pictures like this for five years. So now it's on its third string of five years through Adirondack newspapers. They love it. Then somebody had these pictures of CCC. That's how I got interested in the CCC, and I'll probably die, you know, uh, as a CCC fan, okay? Because this Vermont will be my fourth CCC book, and my next one, if I live, next year I'm 80, if I have this thing already written on, on Massachusetts, a lady did this in 98. She researched all the, all the, all the uh, camps, history, and the projects. So all I have to do is, it's in a library. Nobody reads it, you know? <laughs> so I had these pictures, and I traveled around all these towns giving talks just like I'm doing in Vermont. Anybody have any information? Ah, Scott. Scott, look at this guy from Barry. Okay, Scott, would you mind just telling them for a few minutes about your grandfather and show them what you've got? Well, I've, I've got a big thing, a bunch of stuff over here. I ended up buying my grandfather's house after he passed away. And I'd heard about CCC stuff through the years, but um, he had five kids and nobody claimed any of this stuff, so I was a recipient of it. And I basically... Uh, eventually started looking through it all and becoming more and more interested in it. Um, they've got, and he, was the, he was the education uh, director for a number of camps in this area. He, he was in Waterbury, he was in Rickard Mills, he was in uh, 40th and Allen. Um, and the, tell them this one. This got, one's unbelievable. I've never seen one this big. Oh. Um, look at that. Guess where it is? Waterbury. Wow, that is something else. Well, that's a crew. Isn't this something? Mm -hmm. And it's where the swimming pool is today. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No. Can you believe this one? Look at the size of this. Well, does it say McAllister photo in the bottom right? I can't read that. Could you? You've got glasses. Ellis, sir. Photo by. O.W. Hills, Montpelier. Oh, Hills, okay. Yeah. Isn't this something? So I put a newspaper article in about 10 newspapers, and Scott responded. Other people have responded, uh, you know, about stories about their fathers, etc. And uh, 
So I've got to find out some way of scanning this. I do, I do it in like pieces and then my friend knows how to stitch it together. Yeah. But yeah. unless... Some smartphones have a panorama. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most iPhones. Yep. Cell phones. Mariah, you know how to do it? Yep. <laughs> hey! <laughs> yes, that's that. For all your panorama needs. <laughs> wow. Wow. Really? What? Yeah. That is... You could, you could do it with an iPhone and uh, you could probably find a, a scanner Thank that you. could accept the whole thing at Isn't once. this... But look at this photo album. So his dad, his grandfather... Where was he originally from? Italy. <laughs> oh, he's from Italy. Yeah. Okay. The Carver on the front. That's in Barrie. Yeah. He, he was Gino Carmoli from Burr Carmoli in Canada. Oh, yeah. 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 And uh, so it was, you know, Barrie City. Uh, everything's grand. Oh my and God! So. Yeah. Isn't this? Lots of artists. Yeah. Can you imagine all the stuff that's out there? But most of the boys who worked in Vermont came from Massachusetts because they needed, they didn't have enough boys to do the work here. And I'm sort of running away with myself, but you were lucky to have this guy to be your head forester, Perry Merrill. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, I bought his first book, you know, about the CCC. I thought, oh boy, it's going to have everything about Vermont. <laughs> One page, maybe. Two pages, nothing. He's okay. Got, uh, I got this, a copy of that. He's got a bunch of the, the this one, it, in it. This one's a, a little bit better, okay? <laughs> but he was a poor farm boy from the Adirondacks, from Westport, okay? And then he had to work hard, and I think he went to... Syracuse, where this young man is from. Okay, did you do forestry? Did, did you do forestry? Uh, ecology. Ecology. Okay, where at? In Vermont? Uh, my research was in the Adirondacks. In the Adirondacks. What was your thesis? Uh, it was about it was, uh, growth and population dynamics of Folsom fir. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but USF, uh, but this guy, when he came, he started, you know, he went to uh, Syracuse Forestry, and then when he came to Vermont, he started at the bottom, worked his way up, became the head forester, and he was able to garner, buy, get a lot of state land. So when the state, when the uh, Roosevelt came in, what he did he had all these plans of parks and things to do in the state land. He also was concerned with the Winooski River, the flood of 1927, which your town was devastated and a lot of other towns on the Winooski River. So he went to Washington in 1933, all these plans. This is what I have to do. I'm ready to go. I just need, you know, some boys and some money, okay? Mm -hmm. He even had the plan for the dams on the little river. And what's the river in Montpelier? North Branch. The North Branch, thank you. And also the East Barry Dam. Mm -hmm. What river? Mm -hmm. Or was that part of the beginning, Brian? I don't know the body of water there. You don't know the body of water, just the mountains. <laughs> but they... They had these three dam projects all ready to go. So you know what happened? Since he was there, he pushed for it, he got it. Now, we're gonna give a little contest, a little prize, and we're going to have Judy keep track. We have a little prize to give. Where's my clipboard? I think it was, okay. You just flip it to the back, Judy, oh, okay. and you're going to keep score. All right. Just get, now you get 10 points if you get the, the I forgot what my next question is. <laughs> i got to have a question. Okay, okay, now I remember, okay. Now, everything was based on population. Now, pretend you're in seventh grade and you raise your hand nicely. 
if you know the answer. Okay, Anne? Okay. The first question so is for start? points. So, so I have to know everybody's name. Well, they'll tell us. We'll, okay. we'll give you the name. And you want me to do this after their, after their name? You put their right? name down, and then we'll keep track how many points they get. And at the end, remind me, because sometimes I forget to give the prize. <laughs> you know, could be a big lotto ticket or something, 124 million. Okay. Now, the thing is, okay, what state? Everything was based on population. How many states were there in 1933? Yes. 48. 48. And your name? George. George. Okay. Ten points. George gets ten. Okay, I got to find him first. No, you George just put it right. No, no. Turn it over. Uh -huh. Start a new blank okay. paper. <laughs> <laughs> what if there's more than one? George. George. Ten okay. okay, George, ten points. Yep. Okay, next question. What state? had the largest population, and they got the most CCC boys. Yes? I guess New York. Okay, Mariah, 10 points, New York. Oh, Mariah. So they had 60-some camps. Wow. Or about 67 each year, okay? The more poor boys that you had, the larger population, the more you had. Now, Vermont, I don't know what the population was, but they were only allotted 750 boys. Each camp had about 200 boys, so that would be two, four, six. That would be only three and a half camps that they could have, okay? So now, he was able to get more from Washington, okay? And for the Montpelier, you know, the big, uh, the big water dam there, Wrightsville and Barry. I'll tell you what. It's, it'll be coming up. I don't. I'm, oh, get, I'm gonna jump. I'm jumping to the conclusion. So here I am. We're gonna go back. We're gonna go back there. I traveled around, and people would take me in for the night. I'd go to another town, give another talk. Now tonight, where am I staying? Cambridge. Cambridge. Okay. <laughs> I'm staying at Mary and Peter's house. Tomorrow night. I stay at Sheila and Peter's house. They're two different Peters. <laughs> that's, when, that's when they were telling me I'm staying at Peter's house. You know, I'd say, I couldn't get it. Finally, after about three emails, we finally figured out that they're two different marriages. Okay, but they were. But they, they you know, this way, because for me to stay in all these towns and get motels and gather this yeah. research, forget about it. So I get to know the people. Yeah. So I got that book done. I interviewed about 100 CCC boys. Oh, wow. So I saved these stories because a lot of times the kids would read the story that I have in there about their fathers. I didn't know that. Yeah. My father never told me this. Yeah. So I came to Connecticut. Okay, I came to Connecticut because my daughter was having a baby. Okay, and my wife was originally from Connecticut. This picture, not too far from where I live, but the camp was by the side of a hill, and boxing was really popular. And they had like bleachers setting into the, you know, they're sitting there and watching the matches. And one guy, somebody, uh, a nurse at the soldier's home in Holyoke, Massachusetts, on that Route 91. Yeah. I could see the big building. She said, I got this guy, you know, he's 98 years old, and he said he was in the CCC. Would you like to interview him? Yeah. So I did, and I got his story. He said, Marty, I quit school at fourth, after fourth grade. Mm -hmm. They called me trouble. Because <laughs> he's just always getting into trouble. One day, he got into the wrong crowd, climbed up on the roof, broke into a store. The cops got him, took him to the police station, called up his father. His father's pleading with the policeman, please do not send him to jail. And the policeman said, there's one choice, one chance. If he joins the CCC, he won't have to go. So he went to the town hall, signed up for six months, Okay, and he said that was the greatest thing happened to him. 
He didn't go to jail, and he learned how to discipline. Mm -hmm. Now, because these camps were run by the army. So this, this guy's still alive. He just celebrated his 99th birthday two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and his son took him to the new casino. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably in a wheelchair. <laughs> but, uh, but they're out there. There's somebody here in Vermont. We could find them about 99. And one guy in Connecticut, he just passed away at 104 mm. in December. Another guy, I had two guys, 103. So if you know of anybody, but most of the guys, I really should send notes to Massachusetts newspapers because that's where some of the boys, and Rhode Island. A lot of boys came from Rhode Island and, and worked here in Vermont. Okay, so I did that book, and these were the different camps. I live in a town that had, East Hampton had two camps right here. So I traveled around, and I, it took me seven years, but Oh, this one's so heavy. Probably did too much writing. Nobody wants to read it. Uh, but the 21 camps I got done. Then I went to Vermont. Or no, Rhode Island. Anybody go to Rhode Island? One. That's it? Oh, you've been to You got out of water, Barry? Oh, my God. Because people just stick in their little towns. They don't get out of there. Where do you go in Rhode Island? Well, my brother lives down in uh, uh, Bristol. Bristol, nice. Oh, it's beautiful, right on uh, thing. So then I traveled around, and I got seven camps. That was blank and easy, OK? <laughs> Not, but I only got two guys. This one, I had another 100 guys, CCC. Oh, and when you read the stories, it's just unbelievable how they had quit school to help their families. My, my mother had eight sisters and one brother, and her father died when she was eight. Wow. How my grandmother ever did this? Now, I had grandparents, I said I came from Wilkesburg, a coal mining region. So my father's side came from Slovakia, worked in the coal mines. And the other one, uh, mother's side, came from Lithuania. And these were the countries under the oppression of the Russians, just like the Ukraine so are, are today. <laughs> Terrible. Huh? Do you remember growing up in the 50s and 60s, praying for the conversion of Russia? I don't know, in churches. Oh, if they could <laughs> only get, you know. And then when it happened in the 90s, you know, when these, all these towns got their freedom, and then I was in uh, uh, James, Jamestown, Jamestown, this island next to, in Newport. This lady at the bookstore, she, she, she said she was from uh, Lithuania. And she said, read this book. And I read this book about the smugglers. They would smuggle in books into Lithuania that were in the 1880s, 90s, until uh, for 40 years. They could not speak Lithuanian or read a book in Lithuanian. They had to sneak them in. And the Russian, uh, Tsar Nicholas, wanted everybody to read Russian. Mm -hmm. And you did, uh, didn't speak Lithuanian. But they kept it. They were able to bring in 8 million books. Wow. They did not kill, you know, just like Ukraine. Look at these people. How, oh. yeah those poor ones in Mariupol, mm. how they survive for how many months, the barrage, mm -hmm. and then who's, what's going to happen to them now as prisoners? Oh my God, we are so lucky to live, you know, in freedom, and how many people searching. So I did that book, got that book done. The Depression, as I said, was very, very difficult. Okay, 25% of the people unemployed Roosevelt came to power in 1933. He was the former governor for 10 points of what state? New and, York. And 10 points, New York. He was a conservationist. He liked the plant, just like his cousin Teddy. 
He said, I'm going to propose to create the Civilian Conservation Corps. And he did. But it was called the Emergency Conservation Work Act at first, okay? And he said, he went to Congress on March 27th. He asked, I want 250,000 men in camp by July 1st. Oh, wow. In March. Wow. Oh. It went to the Senate and it passed four days later. Wow. Just like our Congress today. Oh. I don't, Jerome, I don't understand why these people laugh. But can you believe that? Who was the first enrollee? Is there a record of that? Huh? Who was the first enrollee? Who was the first enrollee? I don't know. It was someplace, in, I think, in uh, Virginia. Uh, good question. Yeah, anytime you have a question, and I know a little bit. I don't know, even though I've done three books. There's so much to learn. Just like I learned something, Brian, how many know Brian Lind Lindner? <laughs> okay, Brian, I'm having at the uh, McGillicuddy's, and I got into a fight. That's what happened to me. <laughs> Some guy at the bar, and I just hit me so many times. No, I went to a dermatologist. And I was a tennis coach for 30 years. We didn't wear sunscreen. Remember that in the 60s, 70s? Or sunglasses or a hat, you know? So that's what I'm getting the skin basal cell, yeah. So that's what happened to me. Uh, but the Department of Labor was chosen to choose the boys. So Roosevelt saw there were so many boys unemployed, just roaming the streets, quitting school, eighth grade. I mean, fourth grade. Okay. They would go, I mean, one guy near Saratoga, he said, Marty, my father fell off the roof there uh, at a Ford plant. He couldn't work anymore. He went up to his bedroom, got his birth certificate, and how many remember the smelly ink eradicator? It was like, uh, do you remember that, Judy? No. No, anybody? The Ann remembers that. <laughs> and anybody growing up in the 50s, you would dip this in almost like this little glass uh, rod, and you would dip it on there. It, they didn't have light up. They had ink eradicator. And it must have been, what's the what's stuff it was in there? Maybe Clorox or something like that. And it would eradicate, and he changed the date. He was only 14 years old. Little guy, and he signed up and joined. And he was working in the Saratoga battlefield. Okay? So, the Department of Labor, you had to be 18 to 25. Okay? And you would sign up for six months, and you could stay up to two years in the CCC. Okay? So remember all this stuff now, because yeah. it might be a question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he chose the army because they would give the boys clothing, shelter, food, medical care. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine getting free medical care in the 1930s? Mm -hmm. Look at how many people don't even have it today. Yeah, right. So here he is, okay? Fetchner was the head of the uh, CCCs. Okay, here he's coming in the army. A lot of times, sometimes they had carpenters give them a job, like building the camp here in town. Maybe they had carpenters, or they might have even had the boys working with carpenters to build the, the buildings. Then, in 1932, who could tell me for 10 points, was the president of the United States before Franklin Roosevelt? Who said that? Who? Robert. Robert, 10 points. Herbert Hoover. Okay? And what was his theory? What, was, what did he promise? A chicken and a pot. Who said that? We both said it. Okay, what's your name? Jan. Jan? Mm -hmm. Jill. And Jill. <laughs> Jan, Jan, Jill. Jan and Jill. 10 points each. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. A chicken in every pot. What was the slogan for Franklin Roosevelt? Raise your hand. 
Yes. It was a new deal. Was the new okay. deal. Very good. So Mariah is on the board. Okay. They had the bonus army. These were veterans of World War I promised to get a bonus in 1945 or 46. But in 1932, they didn't have jobs. They marched on Washington with their tents, their shacks, okay? And they said to Congress and the President, please give us our bonus now. Who did Hoover send to deal with this bonus army? Brian Lindner, <laughs> 10 points, okay? Douglas MacArthur, okay? And he drove them, shot some of them guys to with the army, burned their uh, shacks and tents. 1933, they came again. Congress, Franklin Roosevelt, please give us our bonus. Who did Franklin Roosevelt send? Eleanor. Eleanor. <laughs> Correct. Eleanor. <laughs> What's your name? Gloria. Gloria McShelsis <laughs> Theo. <laughs> Ten points. Yeah, there's pictures of her sitting with her. Because <laughs> you're from Washington. No, I'm not. I'm oh, who's the girl? Oh, you're the one from Washington. Yeah, I like Eleanor. <laughs> yeah, Eleanor. She was the ears and the eyes for Franklin because he had polio. So she sat down with, drove up, imagine her driving up in their old car, you know, her big car, and sitting down with the, the veterans. Uh, now, what's your problem? Now, if you're the president and you have protesters marching down Washington, would you let them keep marching? No, you've got, you know, you might have, no, some presidents that don't care, okay, about protests. <laughs> but this Roosevelt said, oh, we can't have protests. Let's keep them quiet. So we're going to have camps not only for the youth, but veterans. Yeah. And right up here at Little River, you had veterans up there okay. of World War I. Mm -hmm. You imagine the older guys and they not only were there but they were also at uh, Wrightsville Dam mm -hmm. and the Barry Dam and in Montpelier Scott doing what? Building a dam. <laughs> <laughs> they were fixing the... Brian? Well they worked on the Nooski River and the Clothespin Dam. The Clothespin Close Dam. Did anybody ever see that factory? The clothespin factory along the Lanuski? Oh, or oh, what's in the river? In Montpelier. Yeah. I don't know if they still make clothespins there. Yeah. They just stop. They stop. Because I went to a, a, a Costco or something or some store and I'm looking to see where they made, but I think it was China. <laughs> where? The Chinese. Chinese. They're lousy. They're lousy. You're going to have to start up the factory, Jill. Huh? Friends of the Clothespin Factory. Okay, so he started this. Now we have veterans coming right here. I, I just can't believe the age. I'm trying to figure if they were in 1918, they were at least 18 years old, right? Maybe a little bit older, maybe 25. So that is 1918, 25. So if 1918 they're 25, how old were they in 1933? Did we get 10 points? <laughs> 10 points. <laughs> Help me. How old was her like 35? 35. 35. Mariah. Oh, Mariah's kid. 35. They so might have been. That's the only reason I can And you know what? They might have been also the Texas Border War. <clears throat> I, I met somebody. I meet so many people. Somebody said their grandfather was in the Texas border war, you know, fighting with the uh, Mexicans. Okay, so that was taken care of. And can you imagine 5,000 veterans came to Montpelier in 1933? And Anne, tell them what happened when they saw some of them getting off the train. Oh, that was in Barry. Oh, Barry. What happened? Well, there were a lot of uh, American Negroes, and they had never seen 
black people before. They didn't know what they were. So, but can you imagine white and black? Out, and of course, they were separated and showed me, you know, up here at the little river, you know, you had all the whites and then on across the street, right? Across the brook. Across the brook was the black camp, okay, of 200 men, okay? So, there they are, veterans of World War I. So, not only did we have the youth, but we had the uh, veterans camps too. And look at this one. This picture, this is the Barry. And you see what they're using yeah. to build the Barry Dam? Yeah. Picks and shovels and a couple trucks. No steam shovels like they had up here doing it. But can you imagine building an earthen dam and wheelbarrows? <laughs> I forget how many I read how many wheelbarrows they had at that camp. The labor, okay. The granite grout from the quarry on top of the hill. Say that again, Brett Scott. They used the grout from uh, the granite on top of the, uh, the granite quarries on top of the hill and used that in the construction. For, because the center, what was in the center of the dam for 10 coins? Yes. No. no. <laughs> yes. No. no. I know. Clay. Clay. Oh, we got lots of that here. Clay, okay. <laughs> and then you'd put the gravel and the other things on the side. And then the walls, or the sides, if you go up there, just all these stones fl laid flat. But the work, I mean, that, that picture is just incredible. And look at the look at the age, the look of the, the guys, the veterans pictures there. They were given physical exams because the army's running it. And one of the requirements, I think you had to be at least five foot one or two, and not more than six foot five or six six, and you had to have four masticating teeth. <laughs> <laughs> They didn't have dentists, you know. If you were poor, you didn't go to a dentist. Mm -hmm. If you had a cavity or a bad tooth, it out. pull it out. Okay? Mm -hmm. And there, there they are getting the... Where did they get the uniforms and clothing for 250,000 veterans and boys? Yes, Ann? There was a woman's floor in Barry that made the uniforms. But be, they had to do this in two months. Where could they get enough to clothe 250,000? Prisons. <laughs> they had to get the clothes from World War I that was in stockpile. So nobody got any points? Nobody got points. Okay. And look at, and can you imagine some of these kids with waistlines of about 24 inches yeah. or 26 inches, okay? They had to, you know, tighten it up. And, but now, now they've got, you know, shoes without holes in it. One boy, listen to this one. One boy in uh, New York, he said, Marty, we're so poor we couldn't afford a coat. So in the winter, they shoved newspapers mm -hmm. in their shirt. Honest to God, they, were, they couldn't buy the books. Sometimes they had to buy books. They didn't go to school because they couldn't buy the books. It was, it was bad. And here, Marshfield, okay, when they were getting up to Groton, that is unbelievable. How many have been to the Groton State Park? That is so, I went up with a guy from your town Frank Spaulding. Anybody know Frank? Yeah. yeah. He's in charge of all of the camp projects, the state projects. Okay? And he took me up there. And that road from R Route I, two. Ricker, Ricker Mills yeah. over to Marshville, six miles, was all built by the CCC. Wow. Huh. Can you believe that? Okay, so there they are. Uh, arriving.
So the boys were transported from Massachusetts and Rhode Island up to Massachusetts, or Vermont, sorry. Now they are getting clothes. And I was fortunate. Now, they didn't wear these working. But these were, uh, I forget what, uh, where I got this one, and also the hat. Now, see the stripes on there? Okay. <clears throat> now, the, we're going to get to a question now. <laughs> Every camp had approximately 200 boys. Okay. There were five barracks, usually. Question for 10 points. How many boys in each barracks? 40. She knows it, 40. Is that Mariah? Mariah. This is helping me study, so it doesn't she studied last night for the test. <laughs> <laughs> I practice my mental math. <laughs> okay, now you could just picture forty boys in one big room. If anybody was a teacher, can you imagine eighteen to twenty-five year olds, forty of them in a room, the smell, the noise? Okay, now, so. The captain said, they, they got those 40 guys. All right, Scott, you're going to be the leader of barracks number one. And instead of getting a dollar a day, $30, you're going to get $45 a month. Mm -hmm. And you got the double stripe. You like that? I'll take it. <laughs> and your name? Phil. 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 You'll be his assistant. Phil or Bill? Phil. Okay, Phil. You're going to be his assistant. You get $36 a month instead of 30 And you've got to keep those 38 guys in line. Make sure the beds are made, clean, 10 o'clock the lights go out, okay? And so that was, they were called the leaders and assistant leaders. Okay, I'll pass this around. Nice wool. And Scott said he also has one. Then I, yeah, look at the lining and everything. Now, this is what they would wear them, you know, at the dances, if they're hitchhiking home, if they weren't too far away from home. Those guys from Massachusetts, forget about it. Uh, they, were, they were stuck here. Okay, what? People pick them up because of what they're Yeah, that was easy. I remember growing up, my mother said, no hitchhiking, no hitchhiking. So I never hitchhiked. Maybe I did one. No, I never did. I was scared. I was scared. And today, no way would you ever want to hitchhike. You don't even see people hitchhiking. Have you seen somebody? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh. They're starting again. Wow. Okay. So they got, now picture this. There's, the, look at the size. They'd have about three stoves. Now, here's a tough question now. You know, you could use different types of fuel. What did the army like the best to heat these stoves with? Coal. Mariah. And why would you like, why did the army like coal? Yes? It's cheap and you can move it easy. It's easier to move, but the big thing, how many have used coal? It, you could bank the fire. Mm -hmm and it could go all night, okay? It's not like you had to keep feeding, you know, with the wood. There were places, too, that they used wood, okay, because there was a lot of wood, but the army, if you'll notice some of these pictures, a big pile of black. It was the, the coal pile. So, Marty, does Mariah get 10 or 20 points? Just 10. <laughs> Sorry, you know, she's, she's, anyway. she's a ringer. We had, one, we had a, a tough one on Sunday, in East Granby, it was tied. Going into the last minute, it was 60 to 60. Yeah. Okay, so they were six months, and you could stay up to two years, a dollar a day. This was more money than the Army was getting. I think it was $26 a month. And the unions were out fighting it a lot uh, because they thought, these boys are going to be taking jobs away from them. <clears throat> and this is the Northfield Barracks. Huh. Okay, Northfield had a barracks. 
you know, a CCC camp. <coughs> and they also had an infirmary or a clinic, okay, dispensary. And one boy, instead of planting trees or doing road work, his job was to stay 24-7 and take care of the sick. Okay? Mm -hmm. And they even had a little room right off of the dispensary where he had a private, in his own uh, bed. They'd have, he'd have a doctor going around uh, doing dentistry work, an army doctor. And can you imagine this doctor would, you know, for the drill, he'd be going with the drill. And you know what the, the old time drill? Remember the old, I dreaded uh, uh, going, going to the dentist and the needles. Do you remember those? This one dentist, he had this big jar that I would go to, and he'd have them in that liquid, the big needle, and I cry. I wouldn't. I took the pain. Ah, look at this camp. I could not find the Bellows Falls camp. I'm looking Bellows Falls, the historical sighting, nothing. Then, in the library, the guy looked up. He looked up all of the newspaper clippings. And he found that it was in the north Westminster part of the town. And I'm driving, trying to find the camp, going up towards Saxton River. And then all of a sudden, I could see a truck parked on the side. Guys pulling out a driveway. I pulled up alongside of him, and I said, do you know where the CCC camp was? And he said, yes, I do. <laughs> he said, you go down the road towards town. And right when you see the flagpole in the dentist's office, make a right, you go over the bridge, and there is the camp. So I did this. I went down, found the flagpole, went to the, and I saw a couple of guys. I said, is this really the way to get to the camp? He says, yes, but you can't go this way because there's a bridge out. you got to go back, go down <laughs> to Bellows Falls, Route 5, and then right before you could get on to 91, there's this dirt road going up. You go up to there, and then you'll see two big stone pillars. That's the camp. Wow. Bingo. I drove up there, and I saw one house, then another house, but I couldn't see anything. Then I'm driving back towards that first house, and I looked in the woods there, the wood area. There was the chimney. Then I knew this was the camp, okay? And it was called CCC Road. <laughs> so I knocked on the door, and the lady came out, and she said, yes, we bought this land from a guy who was in the CCC. He bought it from the town, and she's the state representative. She owned the land where the CCC camp was, but this newspaper clipping of me searching for her, this lady from Bellows Falls called me up. I've got pictures. Look at this. Oh. Oh. And... I think this was the road I came in on. And there's the chimney that I saw there. Okay? Usually it could have been in the, either the mess hall or the recreation hall. But I'll tell you, it's, it's a challenge trying to find it. And the thing is, they'll say it's the Bellows Falls camp, but it's in North Westminster. Okay? The army called the camp after the nearest post office. Oh, wow. So therefore, when you see, and I have, this is, this is my, these are all the camps I got. <coughs> How the heck am I going to do it, kids? I think my seventh graders here. But look at, these are all the spots. The yellow are the ones where there were side camps, meaning the boys, instead of it was a, you know, 20, 30, 40 miles pretty far away, they would just set up tents and work there and come back to the main camp on the weekend. But this is what, and then somebody who's from, who's told me they're from the North East Kingdom, okay? So there was the East Burke camp and the West Burke camp and the Maidstone, the... Brunswick camp. Do you know about those towns? I know East and West Burks. Not Brunswick. 
Okay, so not too many up there, but look at the, the lo location on through here. No. So that's my adventure. Yes? Okay, do you know or somebody in this room know? You're, you talked about the camp being near where the swimming pool is. Wasn't there also a camp up near the dam? Yeah. Oh, there yeah. Was. yeah, we'll get to that. Okay. And then next week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's too hard to do. No, we'll get to that. It's just to tell me when we have to leave. Um, well, you can go in an hour, and the library closes at 8. Okay. And I've got to leave at 8 o'clock to get at my bed and breakfast. Somebody's taking me in in Cambridge. Mary and Peter. <laughs> it's 50 minutes to get there. Okay. But isn't that a neat picture? I'm telling you, I mean, it's just like, oh, wow. Just like when Scott came and his grandfather, all these camps that he was the education advisor. Because in 1934, the, the governments in the army said, what the heck are we going to do with these kids? They're illiterates, okay? Let's teach them skills. So at night, that's when they had classes. Isn't, I just, oh, man. Mess hall, rec hall, and see these are the garages. And look at the boxing rink. Oh, that's huh. great. And see, look at the bleachers. That's great. This one guy, this is from uh, uh, Holyoke. He said he was a boxer, right? He was at the camp, and he said we'd have these gloves, and we'd be boxing, and then the boys would throw in nickels and dimes on the thing. And here we were trying with our gloves. <laughs> to prick up uh, with our gloves <laughs> the money we got from the, the, the boxing. But boxing was really big. One guy from Bellows Falls, he claims his dad, he sent me all these clippings about his dad, but I can't find anything to show that he was in the CCC camp. But he was in the Army, I think. I don't know. Oh, did I push the wrong button? OK, OK. Uh, Elmore. Okay, look at this camp. See, they first started in July in 1933, uh, and they stayed in army camps, or tents, sorry. And so it got cold by, you know, September in Europe and Vermont. So they, while this was happening, they were building barracks. Then they would get up 6 o'clock in the morning, and everybody would uh, inspection. Yep. And then raising of the flag at, at 8 o'clock, checking to see, did they, especially on Mondays, did they all return, you know? <laughs> sometimes some little cutie pie, you know, mm -hmm. back in the hometown, maybe it wasn't too far, kept them back a little bit. So, or some guys, they had this, a couple of guys from New Jersey, they went down to the, anybody ever go to the Pine Barrens or on Atlantic City? And, mm -hmm. Okay, well, I think it was from Hoboken. There were about four guys, they signed up, they went down to the Pine Barrens, and it was terrible. So after about four days, they just, and the army didn't chase them. And you know who one of them was? Frank Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> he did make it. He said, this life was not for me. And here is at the Waterbury garage up there up by the dam. And can you imagine all these trucks were always kept in garages. And they kept them at a little pitch like that with a block of wood with a rope. So if there was a fire, and they would come out. Learn that little trick. Uh, here's the north field. The North Field was at this, the, the uh, fairgrounds in North Field. I don't know if anybody know where that is. Okay, I've got to go to find. And it was right there. The buildings were right on the fairgrounds. This one is the Weston Camp. And here they are. It looks like they're going off to fight a fire. Okay, well, get the boys. So whenever there was a forest fire or a uh, field fire, they would call the boys to help out because there weren't volunteer firemen in those days, yeah. okay? And the state didn't, uh, this was a way of helping. 
And then I, I looked online, I saw at the Weston camp, there was this guy standing in front of the sign that said, this is where the Weston CCC camp was. And the guy was Orton, yeah. <laughs> what's his name? He's Brett. Yeah. Orton, Country starts store. with an L. <laughs> Lyman, Lyman Orton. Lyman, Lyman. Last Lyman. Lyman Orton, okay. Lyman Orton is standing, so I called up. He says, yeah, yeah, there was a camp right near where my parents started the store, I think in 44, okay? And even somebody I talked to, they said they rented out the room in the back where the cheese shop is. <laughs> you know, uh, well, I gotta remember all these stories, you know? Yeah. Uh, but that was, that was a, that one you have to bushwhack to get into, mm -hmm. uh, Lyman told me. Look at St. Albans, boys going off to work, okay, get ready for the trucks. So I got to go up there maybe tomorrow if I could sneak up there to see what they've done up there. The big jobs they did was road building, building dams, okay, and because they needed roads to be able to fight the fires and also take out the wood too. Uh, lunchtime, they did an eight hour day, but an hour for lunch and 10 point question, mm -hmm. what was their favorite sandwich? Bacon. Bologna. Bologna. Spam. Spam wasn't invented yet to World War II. <laughs> Come on. I'm going to guess corned beef. No. How about peanut butter? No. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. And jelly. And jelly. And jelly. Yes, <laughs> 10 points. What's your name? Jen gets 10 points. Ooh, she's going to be one of the leaders now. Peanut butter and jelly. Okay? Uh, they built bridges. They did this construction. See, they would hire a local man. They called him the LEM, local experienced man. <laughs> LEM. And one lady from Montpelier called me up and she says, my, my grand, my father was the mason who built the Townsend camp. Mm. Oh, wow. okay. So, I mean, this, the more towns, I gotta keep going to towns, oh, you get God. more stories. Okay, then the dinner bell rang, <laughs> and all you could eat, family style. One boy, he said, Marty, we'd be standing there as the mess sergeant would be saying a prayer. He said, we'd all be looking there, and I was looking, What's the biggest pork chop to grab? <laughs> but can you imagine, these boys gained 5, 10, 15 pounds, and they were using their muscles, okay? They learned how to work, they had discipline, okay? Look at this, isn't this a picture? Isn't that neat? Yeah, they had pet dogs. This is the uh, Weston uh, camp. Look at the pet dog, I bet you he got a lot of food. But it, do you see? It's just like our children and grandchildren's uh, bedrooms. Uh, <laughs> beds made neatly. Uh, so I've got my two girls. Uh, they're now teenagers. So I'd say, all right, Kira and Lydia, if you make the bed, you get your dollar a day, just like the CCC. <laughs> okay, Papa. So they would got to learn their CCCs because I'd take them to CCC camps. But isn't that neat picture? And of course, there's no insulation. So you could just imagine, especially they were built sometimes just on those pilings, you know, and there was air going underneath. So it was cold, okay? St. Albans. Some of these boys would bring their instruments, okay? And they would have bands. This boy, he was in charge of the... Uh, what do they call it? Marble. Where they sell the, the cigarettes. Oh, canteen. Yeah. The canteen. Yeah. And he his job was to order and in the evenings sell and on the weekends. That's all he had to do. And he was an assistant leader. Ten points. How much money did he get? $36. Who said that first? Jill? Okay. Jill gets ten. He said you did. <laughs> Is that true? I think I heard you first. Oh, okay. I, I never raised my hand, I'm sorry. Okay. So, 
he would order the pipe tobacco cigarettes. They, some of these boys rolled their own too. They'd have contests like boxing or if it was billiards, pool. Guess what the prize was? A carton of cigarettes. And that was a big thing, okay? <laughs> smoking, you know, nobody knew the dangers of smoking. Uh, they had, look at pool tables, uh, ping pong, mm -hmm. and the money that they made at the, at the canteen went for maybe to buy a pool table or ping pong or even uniforms for sports. Mm -hmm. Saturday night, they could go into town if they mm -hmm. get, you know, they were behaved. They're the boys loading up on the trucks and maybe it's going to the movies, going to the little uh, uh, ice cream place, uh, or maybe to meet some girls, yes. Where was Camp Elmore? Where in Elmore? Uh, at the end, going north, it's at the northern end of the lake. Oh, okay. Well, that's the park, you know where the park is? Yeah, yeah. That's right behind, that's where it was. Uh -oh. oh, where the camp was, up on the hill. And I didn't make it because the road was so icy. Frank and I were driving up, and it was in December. We were going up and just couldn't go. But you have to go behind where you camp. There's a road that goes up, and that's where it was. I never made it to it, but that's where the camp was. Elmore Mountain? Elmore. And then if you go further, that's where the fire tower is. Yeah. The boys didn't put up the tower but they built the cabin and the trail, I think. Windsor Camp, Mount Escutney, okay? Uh, here are the boys. Looks like they're also dressed up, ready to go. And a lot of times these boys met a girl from Vermont and from Massachusetts, they wound up marrying them, okay? Or if they went out west, California, Montana, whatever, they wound up to stay there and marry the girls. Uh, <clears throat> and one, I met quite a few people who said, if it wasn't for the CCC, I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's where my parents met. Mm. Okay, look at boxing in Poultney. And Poultney was a soil conservation camp. Oh. Okay, it was the only oh. one where they did a lot of rip rapping along the, the rivers. Oh. You know, and uh, Poultney too is near where they get the shing, uh, slate. The, slate. The slate, slate, yeah, okay. And look at this, the East Barry, the vets <laughs> skiing on a little hill. Basketball team, uh, baseball team, see the uniforms? They, in order to buy it, they, they made money at the canteen. Some of the boys just stayed in the camp and did the cooking, okay. And I met one family down in Connecticut. Their father was a cook there, wound up being, starting a restaurant. Uh, KP duty, kitchen patrol. Uh, Sunday, they would go to a church. There's a picture from this one boy's album how, uh, of the uh, church there in Poultney, the Congregational Church, where sometimes an army uh, chaplain would come. Excuse me. I think that said Pollock. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it was Pollock. Pollock? Yeah. 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 Is, where's Pollock? That's uh, South Carolina. Yeah, that's uh, Is it Vermont. near Poultney? So, oh, no. Must no. be, because that's where the boy was in no, Poultney Camp. No? Arlington, Bennington. Yeah. Oh, oh, further south. south. Oh, further south. south. Yeah. Oh, okay. He must have went to that church. Thank you very much. So I don't screw up. Education classes, typing was very popular. Some of them got their GED. Some got just their elementary, eighth grade diploma. Mm -hmm. Some were truck drivers, so they were able to get truck driving jobs when they left. Mm -hmm. Cooking, photography. Some of these camps had their own dark room. Mm -hmm. They were able to develop their own pictures. Huh. Uh, there, look at the vets up at your Smith camp, taking classes at night. Look at the Danby classroom. Isn't that gorgeous? And the Waterbury raised pigs. Now, Brian, could you tell them what you learned about the pig raising? 
Well, Mariah's an expert. Mariah, on that. you want to tell? I don't know about that. Because she's studying to be a doctor. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> There um, was an outbreak of trichinosis, which is a mm. uh, uh, parasite that comes out of uh, not entirely cooked pork. Um, and the outbreak at, the, that, at Camp Smith was so large that at least 10 um, people ended up getting transferred up to the Army Hospital at Fort Ethan Allen up in uh, Colchester. Mm. Mm. Um, and then, like, I think, what, something like 30, 50 more in camp were, um, were sick as well, but not serious enough to need to go up to Colchester. And what ended up being interesting and why it's so notable is because it actually ended up being featured in the New England Journal of Medicine. Um, and you, like, if you look, look it up, you can, you can find it on Google Scholar. It's really neat. Well, thank you, Moran. So that's the pigs. <laughs> yes. With the vets camp, were were uh, boys also at that same camp? Good question. There were at least one youth, guys 18 to 25, that were also at, and it was the Jericho CCC camp that came down from Jericho after only six months and came and worked there. Good question. Thank you. So they learned how to drive a truck, and each camp of 200 guys, they had about 15 trucks. You know, they were a mixture of army trucks and uh, state conservation. And guess what I got? That's <laughs> great. Huh. great. I was in at one uh, talk there in Connecticut, and this guy brought this in. I said. How would you like to trade that for one of my books? <laughs> so uh, this is the way I got. Uh, and when these boys were driving, they were working for the army. So if they were stopped by the police or state police, they couldn't get a ticket <laughs> because they were working for them. And they had governors too. I don't know if they were able to change it. You know, keep mm. you couldn't go past 35. But there were a lot of truck accidents, and boys died because you had an 18-year-old driving, or 17-year-old's driving. Especially, you imagine in Montana and Idaho on those crazy roads. I mean, even in Connecticut, going to this one town, they were going to a movie, and it flipped over. And also Madison. Ten minutes left, okay. No, Newspapers, okay. Happy Days is one, uh, Scott found one. Each camp had a camp newspaper. They usually came out once a month. And this is a great way you could get them online. So you could just look for CCC camp newspapers and you could read some of the camps in Vermont are there or whatever state. And Happy Days came out every week. Newspaper from all over. What did these boys accomplish? These are some of the things for, uh, by 1936, different projects they did. You'll have to read the book. Okay, plant, uh, tree diseases. Look at 100,000, 1 billion trees throughout the United States. Big one, you know, uh, the caterpillar. Or let's see, yeah, 10 caterpillars. You know how terrible they are. Oh, imagine stepping on those and the, the, the guts and everything are falling out. But they would eat the uh, trees. Blister rust was another one. Now, big question, in Vermont, what's the largest tree in Vermont growing, tallest tree? White pine. Who said that? Our forestry man. <laughs> and your first name? Brian. Brad gets 10. Brian. Brian gets 10 points. The other Brian, yeah. Okay. Brian, what's your last name? Fitzgerald. F. Wait a minute. What? <laughs> That's Scott Fitzgerald right here. Are you related? My brother's name, right? <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly. You didn't know that your brother was here. Nope. Okay, well this one, they found out if they could get rid of the currant and gooseberry bushes mm. because they were like the Carrier. middle part of this fungus <laughs> because the, the, uh, the fungus had to go into the currant and gooseberries. So they had the boys going through in the springtime, 
pulling up any gooseberries or currant bushes that were within 900 feet of white pine. And if they did that, they would not have blister rust. And nationally, you could not raise these current bushes. I know in New uh, Connecticut, they have one farm. I guess they have special permission to have the current, current uh, jelly. Okay. Then another thing, the caterpillars were a menace. They have the boys climbing up the trees, looking for the egg masses. What did they paint these egg masses with? Chris also. <laughs> Everybody gets to know. She could be she's a good reader. Yeah. Can you imagine they had like a tin can with with the creosote in there and paint them to kill the millions of eggs that were in yes. these? And oh, then they put burlap. Burlap around because when it gets hot, the caterpillars would crawl underneath there. And they would squish them. Okay, they fought fires. Now I found out, I don't think Vermont had fire holes, water holes. Did you ever see any, Mariah, these holes in the forest? No. Adirondacks, you do. No. Connecticut, you do. I think there are a couple. Who? Like Brian, you saw a couple? Who? Yeah, Bob? I think there are a couple by Camp Smith. Those are the water tanks. I think those, that's the remainder. Those, those were the old cesspools. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they built lookout towers, fire Two. towers. What? Seven new um, towers for Vermont. I can't recall. Okay, truck trails. This is the one from Danby, Mount Tabor, all the way to Peru. Oh, wow. And it's a gravel road that they built. Okay. And here's the crusher. Look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? Oh. This is in Townsend. Uh, anybody ever go to Townsend? My folks live there. They live there now? No, they're, go they're both gone. It is gorgeous. And that's the one this lady in Montpelier, her father was the mason, the L-E-M, oh, yeah. local experienced man, who worked with these boys. And here there's a fireplace that's a shelter, then the bathroom. But look at the stonework. What is, where is that? Townsend. It's in the Townsend State Park. Oh, okay. I know where you're talking Townsend about. State Park. Okay. It's a hard one to get to. I, I know where you have to is. go on a dirt road. <laughs> I had a hard time finding it, but it's gorgeous. Look at Mansfield Base Lodge, built by the CCC, still used. Uh, Rickard Pond uh, Shelter, Not Shelter National Forest in Shrewsbury. That road that goes from Shrewsbury all the way to Plymouth. There is a gorgeous place. This, all you have now is the chimney. It was a, a great place for picnics, etc. Didn't use it. The only place this is the water, the well is still there. Because mm -hmm. I was there, I might have. It's just all growing up. Uh, Owl's Head. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and look at Calvin Coolidge State Forest. And then Owl's Head, the lookout. So, mills, they would take the lumber and uh, make wood. They fought. You know, came when natural disasters occurred, uh, 36 flood, uh, look at the Pierpont, Pierpont Bridge, 38. So they needed help people to clean out the basements. Anybody ever clean up after a flood? My parents had the 72 Agnes, I think it was, okay? And that was the year we got married, 1972. It's going to be our 50th anniversary, July 8th. Yeah. And I went to, this is right before our wedding. Our wedding rings were in Wilkes-Barre jewelry store, flooded. Oh. So we, I think we had to go to Barker's or something, uh, James Way store, <laughs> to get our wedding rings. Uh, 
because, you know, I think it was going to, but t they had a little cottage on the second floor. Uh, the river came, Susquehanna got so high, the mattresses, did you ever move a mattress that had been, oh. you had to cut it in half and just, right. just about lift it to throw it out the window because it was so sodden with water and mud. Oh. Well, you know, yeah. okay. Uh, the greatest generation, right? They loved it. These are all the towns. I don't know if you could be able to see. After a while, you could come up. Uh, the different towns that I'm working on, where there were camps, and everything. I'm not exactly sure of everything, but it's a work in progress. Anybody want to help me go on a road trip? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Huh? You should do the 251 club. I got something better. <laughs> <laughs> the 102 Club. <laughs> now, when you are in the 251 Club, you pay your dues $12 and they give you a road map. You buy this book for $20 and you get little history and interesting places to visit and you keep track of it. And we have a, a dinner, luncheon, once a year. Yeah, that sounds, sounds very good. similar. <laughs> or you come to Connecticut and you do the 169 Club. And you get more counseling in Connecticut. 169, and then you keep track right there. Look at that cover, isn't it awesome? Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Who could tell me for 20 points? Ooh. What town? Yes. Mystic. Mystic, 20 oh, what points. Is what did she get? You can knock off 20 points. I spent a couple days docked in Mystic. Bessie got it too. And if you get tired of doing that one, you could do Rhode Island. We only have one guy who's been to Rhode Island. It's gorgeous. You've been there? Look at this. This. This, there's, a, there's a hotel at the top, and it's called the Inn at Castle Hill. One night, $600 a night. <laughs> and they have about 125, yeah, 125 uh, Adirondack chairs looking over Narragansett Bay. Mm -hmm. It's just because it's got all these little islands, etc. It's just coastline. Okay, so I got so it all from I got it all from Vermont. Okay, I joined it, but I should should keep track of it myself. Yeah. Barry City had one. Now we got one minute to go. <laughs> Bellows Falls. There's the there's that. See the entrance way. Oh, it's over. Yeah. They did that one. Townsend State Park. And that's. What's that famous guy? Rudyard Kipling. No, in what's that town? No, it's some other little town. It's above Brattleboro. Did you know that he wrote? Yeah, the Jungle Book. The Jungle Book in Vermont. Look at this one. I got to go to that one tomorrow or no? What Friday? Brunswick. Pavilion. Colchester. Danby. Danby. There's the big road. And did they build any buildings at uh, at uh, Mount Philo over in? Yeah, Shalak? it's coming up. Yeah. It's coming up. Okay, East Burke. I got to go up there. Uh, Elmore. Yeah. That's a beautiful lodge there. Uh, bathhouse. Jericho. Ludlow. Skiing, fire tower. Oh yeah. Okemo. Then Marshfield. New Discovery. Carlton. Menden. Middlesex. Montpelier, Bailey Dam. Montpelier, Wrightsville. Look at that! Isn't that unbelievable? Wow. Yeah. 
Look at this one, the, the legacy they left there. Moscow. I don't have too much information on that one. But the Trapp family rented it for 10 years, Maria. Huh. Oh, no. Johannes von Trapp called me up and he said, yes, they rented it. And they had a music and singing camp for 10 years there. Were you there? No. <laughs> <laughs> Northfield. Uh, Northfield. Roxbury. Ooh, I gotta go. Okay. Nice. Look at the North Shrewsbury. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's the and it, there's this elementary school there now. There's those pants. Northfield. See, that's that. I remember I was telling you just the well is left. North. Hetford. That always sounds like a lisping. Okay, almost done. Well, they're closing up here. Peru. Hapgood State Sawmill, Danby, mm -hmm. Cavendish, Plymouth, Coolidge, Pulteney, Soil Camp, Sandbar, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ricker Mills, Alice, had, yeah. Alice State Park, Plymouth, Ripton. They had, they built it, but they ran out of money. Congress didn't abandon. Nobody ever went to this camp. <laughs> Rochester. St. Albans, Sharon, ooh, this one. When it was closed, Dartmouth professor and Harvard and Dartmouth guys tried to run a camp there. It was both for anybody, poor or rich. It only lasted six months. But that, that's that. Sutton, Burke, okay, Barracks. North Tetford, Underhill, that's where I'm going to try to find tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, look There's at that nice. Sandbar. They did the sandbar. Waterbury Dam. Wow. Look at this. Wow. Yeah. That's what it was. Mm. Wow. Then they started building it up. 15 Great. steam shovels. There's the camp. 2,600 veterans, and you could walk. Anne and uh, Brian and different historical society have made trails for parts of it. Look at it from the air. Mm. These were <coughs> barracks, look at like a U. 100 veterans in it. 100. Look at that. Isn't that incredible? 2,600 wow. up there. Building it. Look at that. And gardens, look at they were, and there's the black camp. They had ice skating. That was the ski jump that they built there. <laughs> look at the movie theater they had. <laughs> the infirmary, how big it was. And then the fire yeah. for uh, administration died, mm -hmm. finished. Mm -hmm. President Roosevelt came, the veterans leaving, the Waterbury Dam. Mm. The legacy we have. Mm. Yeah. You could go. Oh, you see that? Yeah. Waterbury. You said your town. That is your town. Thanks to Brian's pictures. Mm -hmm. Right down where the swimming pool is. Look at that. Notice the mountains. Familiar? They were Camel's Hump, Mount Philo, Smuggler's Notch, and Granville Gulf, Hubbard Park. Waterbury Side Camps at Alice State Park. Waterbury Side Camp Stowe in Moscow. They also Nose built dive. Nosedive. Oh, yeah. And what was the other one you Bruce, skied? The Bruce Trail. The Bruce Trail. Yeah. Right. Look at there them. There they are, cutting the trail. They also built the stone the shelter yep. from yeah. your camp. Yeah. Look at all the ski uh, places built by. Uh, I did not know that. Can you wow. believe Bromley? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Huh. Grew up skiing there. This this is unbelievable. All due to Perry Merrill. He went to Austria, saw the skiing over there. Look what it, he brought to uh, here. Then you go to Mount Philo, mm. up yeah. there. Look at the view. Yeah. Those are in great shape. Those buildings. And this is this is look at Waterbury. Yeah. That's where it was. Yep. West Burke. They said that architecture 
was really far out for 1930s. Weston Camp. Uh, anybody ever go to Glendale Forest Campground? Wilmington. I still haven't found the exact location of this camp. Windsor, Mount of Scutney. Look at the nice shelters. Yeah. Oh, and right next to it, uh, Wilga State Park. Wrightsville Dam. Then the world came. We no longer needed the boys in the woods. We needed them on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Camps were closed, not officially, but look at the legacy. If you ever go to Red Rocks, uh, outside of Denver? Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. That is awesome. Wow. They yeah. took these this area with two big red rocks mm -hmm. and they how they carved out seating for 10,000 people i was there for steve miller band yeah. and this british guy 10,000 people going crazy underneath the stars yeah so oh, if you yeah. ever get have you been there yeah yeah oh man i it's get the goosebumps yeah. and it's fabulous <laughs> then you said you've been down to virginia they built that uh, the look at the rich. beautiful places. Look, yeah. there's that uh, Townsend place. Yeah. You could come to Connecticut to our museum, open on Sundays. The only building left is right here, mm -hmm. the officers' quarters. And it's open 12 to 3. So anybody who wants any of these books, this is my house on uh, Lake Pukatapag in Connecticut. And there's my <laughs> grandchildren. Uh, Here's Anna and Lily and Luke and Kira and Lydia and Matt just got engaged. My daughter Christy and my wife Lynn and my baby Ryan. So thank you so much for having me. Anybody who wants a book in another state? Yes. Get a Come up prize. here. This is a prize from my town where I live in now, East Hampton. is called a Bell Town. Belltown, <laughs> USA. <laughs> they ship bells, sleigh bells, all over the world. And this is the bell they give on the Polar Express from Essex to all the kids. And they make cowbells, etc. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Question. Do you know when your book for Vermont's going to be done? I am hoping next year, the 90th anniversary. Mm. I hope. And I told Brian, this is one of the last five to six states that do not have a statue honoring the CCCs. Oh, wow. well, we have that plaque up at camp. <laughs> you do not have the... The statue of the worker, CCC worker. Where should we put it? Well, we were just. That, that's the best I can think of would be the monitor barn, uh, where the v uh, VYCC works out of. It's not very well. Or you said St. Albans? Or oh, Sand, Sand Bar? Sand Bar. Sand Bar would be the other Sand Bar. one. Some place where the boys <clears throat> built. You had 26 parks that were built by the CCC here in Vermont. But we need a group to start raising the $24,000 so that we here could have one. You could have one right here. Oh my God. I get the goosebumps. Just thinking, no, up there by your, uh, but the people don't get out there. No, but sandbar is better. You need some place where people go. More people travel through a sandbar than. Yeah. Listen, my guests are waiting for me. Does anybody want a book of the Adirondacks or any of these? There are, any book is twenty dollars. If not, class dismissed. <laughs> Marty, I have a question. Was it question. Dummerston that uh, Rudyard Kipling was from? Was it Dummerston? That's yeah. it, Dummerston. Hey. Ten points. Thank you. <laughs> Here, I got thirty now. Do I get a bell? <laughs> You're at thirty. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that I'm was 20. after. That was after the contest. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Marty. And if you know any more, send me an email. I have a card here. <laughs>